in this alternate timeline, Charlie wouldn't be so nice. She would be evil. She loved her father, but ever since she became absent, ever since she watched him slowly lose interest in her, slowly lose interest in being a parent, slowly lose interest on his reality as he became depressed and his- And, well, her mother just abandoned her like that. It made anger build up inside her heart until she eventually hated hell. She hated the sinners. She believed she was above them as eventually she left. However, she would start to study people around her. As Charlie's anger built inside of her, she viewed sinners as less. However, eventually she would start to see things about them. She would start to learn about overlord culture, learn about how overlords take over things, and she would start to view them higher. She didn't care about them, but she thought they were interesting. And she was intrigued about these people who didn't have any special powers and were wiped out and came down here and suddenly were born with powers. It seemed so interesting. Charlie would be studying these people until one day Charlie would bump into one of them. Valentine, she said, hey, princess, I heard you are very powerful and you're looking to start something. Charlie then smirked as she had an idea. I'm going to open an apartment so people like you, powerful people, can stay there or send clients there for shady things and they'll be protected. Of course, it'll cost a, a pretty hefty margin. Also, it'll have secret rooms down below for wealthy people. I'm gonna start building it. How much do you wanna invest? Val would say, an investment, huh? Can I make it however I want? You have your own room you can design. Val would say, I already have my own room. Why would I need that? Because. If things get bad, after all, there's many old overlords that don't like you. You need to find a place to escape. As Val said, all right, I'll tell the others. As Charlie would walk in with Val and meet Vox and Velvet. Velvet would look up and say, is that the princess? Are you with the princess? I never thought you would have fun with. Charlie would say, ew, no offense, but I wouldn't touch him with a 10 foot pole. Val would then screech a little angry. I had a business opportunity for you. I would build an apartment, the happy apartment. The apartment would just be a front, you know, just for people to stay there and enjoy it. It would be extremely cheap and extremely luxurious. However, there's something that no one else really knows. That below the apartment is secret rooms that will be paid for by you as an escape in case you're in danger. Velo would say, do you really think we're going to be in danger? Charlie would smirk and say, what about extermination or even people like you hide? As Velvet sighed and said, fine. But if this is extermination proof, then, then, well, I guess you really have a good business opportunity. Charlie would then pitch this to the others, as her hotel would be, as her, as more overlords would stay there, it would become a safe place. And since it's owned by Charlie, Adam couldn't attack it. And basically, overlords would stay there and be safe from extermination. And they would owe Charlie a lot. And Charlie would get insight on their businesses. And then Charlie would begin to start her own businesses and start to have people under her in secret. This is all part of her plan to rule the, all the overlords. However, they have their own set of loyalty and their own set of rulers. So it was time for her to prove that she was the strongest. As in, she called a meeting for all of them. As Charlie would then sit there at the meeting, as they all looked at her, as in they said, what does this mean about? Charlie would say, I've been wanting to control this underworld for a long time. All you have to do is kick up 5% of your profit to me and I won't hurt you. As in they would all practically laugh at her face. But then Charlie's eyes would turn red. Horns would go out and say, do you really think I came unprepared? You would then pull out an angelic spear and say, anyone who wants to fight me, bring it on. But if you lose, there's no coming back. Everyone was shocked. She was threatened in extermination not to join her. Most overlords sat and began to talk until a few stood up. These few were zestial. And well. As zestial and a few other overlords would go to Charlie, they were a bit scared. This was the princess of hell. And well, she never had that nice status. She was always known as being mean and smart and calculative. After all, she protected them from exterminations. Now she wants to exterminate them if they don't fall in line. Jeshua would start to fight her as she would as she would summon giant green portals. As green missiles and tentacles came from them, she would dodge them all. 
as a big dinosaur lady would try to punch her, throwing her down. But then she would fly so fast no one could see her as she destroyed the dinosaur lady. Jeshio be continued to fight, even though he knew it was pretty much worthless. Many of our lords joined him. However, Charlie's been training for a long time in this timeline. She's almost mastered her potential. And with her sharp, extremely strong skills and sharp sense of instincts, she was able to wipe them out. As in she pointed at Velvet and Val and Vox. You are my right hand people. The V shall rule hell with me, but double cross me, I'll destroy you. I am a V, or should I say a C, the C V. Hmm, I like it. Val says, that's kind of tacky. As then he held a spear right to his face, as he said, um, but it's growing on me. As well, Val was nervous, and the first time in a long time, the V's were on top, but they had to appease Charlie. Charlie was like their boss. Charlie inadvertently slowly started to control their business more and more and more from under their nose, and now she straight up just becomes the boss of all the overlords. As the V's would help maintain her empire, however, she would keep a close eye on them. After all, they were power hungry themselves and couldn't be trusted. But as the time passed, Charlie wanted more and more. She wanted to rule hell herself. Charlie already ruled the pride ring, but that was easy. Lucifer was depressed and didn't really get involved here. And she's just basically like an overlord, ruling all over the crime, taking over imps' lives, basically controlling things in the shadows, controlling things in secret. That's how she wanted to control. As suddenly, though, she wanted more. She wanted to control more, so she knew who to talk to. As she decided to go towards the weakest, Charlie would go to the weakest sin, as that was Asmodeus. Charlie needed a fight to prove that she was strong. After all, fighting overlords is one thing, but fighting a sin is a whole other matter. Even though he was the weakest, this would still prove something. As she wanted to rule hell, but not directly. She wanted to rule from the shadows, so she wasn't that big of a target. After all, her dad let things go down the drain. Now she can fix it. It'll just take a little bit of finesse. As in, Charlie would knock on the door. Asmodeus would answer. Asmodeus would look at Charlie and say, Ah, are you here to visit? Here to party? I didn't know you were that type of princess. I guess everyone has a surprise. Charlie would say no. I want you 10% of your earnings. 10%? Yeah. Towards the Charlie and Resource Company. As Charlie would show... As Charlie would look at Asmodeus and say, Well, what about the money? Asmodeus knew this was a front, some dirty company. She wanted to control him. As Asmodeus said, Really, princess? You know, you could have just used a royal order or something. But your father lets us do whatever we want. And look, he has his problems, I'll admit, with leadership. But I admire him. And he's the best king and only king we've had. And that's why Charlie says yes or no. Asmodeus says, you're starting to piss me off. Asmodeus and Charlie would start to fight. As Asmodeus was fighting for his position, Asmodeus was fighting to keep power, and even though he was the weakest of the overlords, he assumed Charlie was going to be a pushover, because Charlie's been trapped in a royal palace, and hasn't seen true combat. Little did he know that she was training, that she was becoming more ruthless, and that she practiced on many overlords. Even though they are nothing compared to a sin, it still helped her with experience, as Charlie would then destroy Asmodeus and almost wiping him out. As Asmodeus fell to the floor, Charlie would say, do you bow? Asmodeus would say, yes, I bow. Charlie would then begin to laugh. It started out as her becoming a V, but now she's far more than that. Now she is an overlord, an overlord above overlords, an overlord above sinners. She is the queen of hell and everything except for the title. As she would go and make others sin, seven deadly sins bow to her will until they are all under her as her and the V's ruled hell with an iron fist, ensuring that she had all the power. And Lucifer never found out because of his depression. The world never found out, as she was a figure who ruled in the shadows, who ruled all of hell without a single person knowing. And that's where I'm gonna leave things off. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and please, please, please hit that thanks button. It means the world to me. Share it with all your friends. And yeah, how do you think of this video? I think the video went pretty well. The thumbnail I made is kind of iffy. I might have to make a new one, but it takes a lot of work. <laughs> I got him.
like three pictures and put them all together which can work very very well in a thumbnail or it can work very 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 well kind of bad so yeah I, I don't know how this thumbnail is going to look, I'll be honest, but I hope it looks good. But you clicked on the video, did you like the thumbnail? And when people say thumbnail doesn't matter, it's about the content of the video. No, the thumbnail matters a lot. It matters just as much as the title, because if you're going to click on a video, you want it to look good. You want it to get your attention, because you're going to see at the very minimum like eight other videos beside yours. And you want one that's going to get your attention. Thumbnails do absolutely matter. Yeah. Uh. Don't listen to anyone who says they don't. Don't listen to anyone who's like, man, the video, which the video itself is definitely important. You got to make good quality video. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but like you have to worry about the thumbnail. The thumbnail is very important. Don't let anyone say, oh, the video is way more important than the thumbnail. The thumbnail is like the cover of a book. You know what I mean? And the cover is just as important as what's inside it because, well, if it's not gonna, if it has like a crappy cover, you're not gonna want to read it. You know what I mean? So it's all about the cover. It's about the cover that draws you in. The thumbnail is the cover of the book. And yeah, maybe that's a bad analogy since no one wants to read anymore, <laughs> including me. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not just dogging on you guys. I'm dogging on myself. So maybe, maybe that's a bad analogy. But yeah, do any of you guys still read? Like, do you read books? You know, and if so. What do you read? Like, do you read fiction, nonfiction? I, I do, actually. I used to read a lot about bats and animals and, like, stuff like that and history. But I've stopped recently. Ever since I got out of school, which, you know, maybe I'm thinking about going back to school. I don't know. It's a big iffy question. But, yeah, in my life right now, I'm kind of, like, in an area where I could do one thing or do another, and I kind of want to mess up, you know, because I, I got to choose a career that I'm supposed to do my entire life, unless this YouTube thing pops off, which it probably won't, but hey, if this pops off and I get a million views somehow, which I highly, highly doubt, thank you so much for making me pop off, but yeah, yeah, I appreciate you, thank you for watching, thank you for commenting, thank you for liking, and thank you for always being there for me, it means the world, peace out.